In the heart of Zambia's education landscape lies a tale of transformation. Join us as we explore the journey of educational development facilitated by Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, in the Saka district. Our story begins at Arthur Wiener Primary School, where the head teacher Monica Sandash sheds light on the challenges facing her institution. We have uh, 2,215 learners, uh, 2,315 learners this year, but the desks that we have are not enough. We only have 350 desks against that number. So most of our learners, especially grade eight, nine, those are bigger children, uh, they sit three on one desk, on a two-seater desk, which is not safe for them. And um, for the young ones, they sit four, four per desk. Yes, but we've, we, we've applied uh, from CDF. Last time, we, last year, we received about 100 from uh, the, the government. From I can just come in briefly uh, on the bus, about the numbers, uh, you know, learners. When the schools were being constructed, the uh, plan was that uh, each school should have up to 1,800 learners at that time. And, that's and all the schools came complete with desks, chairs, uh, and so on. So the growth, the growth has happened, uh, you know, since then. If you remember, the first growth was in 2002, the major growth, when the government introduced uh, free basic education, which at that time was free from grade one, two, grade seven. That was the beginning of this, of this you know, disparity between the, um, the spaces. Then the other challenge that we have is that um, as a school, you, we, have, um, we offer practical subjects, especially grade eight and nine. Practical actually starts from grade five, six, seven, up to nine. But we do not have um, a, a, a computer lab. We've just improvised a classroom, which we have made a computer lab. We do not have a science laboratory. We do not have um, an art room. We offer art. The National Science Center, uh, since 2002, has been getting support from JICA to actually produce mobile science laboratories, which are then distributed to schools that do not have science of is including secondary schools and as part of the, um, the uh, cooperation with JICA uh, 1,750 mobile science of were actually produced and distributed to 343 schools. At Prince Takamando School, head teacher Mr. Kelly Kikalunga reflects on the school's journey amid its increased enrollment and infrastructure needs. So we have a lot of learners, being a primary school in Bowling, the only primary, the only government primary school. It means most of the learners from Bowling here, they find themselves in this school. So the school is having a lot of numbers, especially after the pronouncement of free education. All those who are in the compounds, they have found themselves in the school. Yeah, as it is the government policy now that if a learner walks in the school, they are looking for spaces we have no right to say no. We have to accommodate them. And we look at so many things also. Uh, we have just opened the EC Center, as it is the direct from the ministry, this year. We have about 60 ECE learners. Okay. As a school, we run uh, three, three sessions. There are those who come in the morning, there are those who come in the mid-morning, and there are those who come in the afternoon. Totaling the number two, 2,434, as I said already. So, briefly, that's our background. And for the teachers, we are phasing out the secondary section, but all together, the teachers, we have about now 47 teachers in the school. 34, I mean, 37 uh, female teachers, and then the other, they are male teachers. So we have more female teachers than male teachers. I think briefly, that's what I can say about the school. What about the learners? There are boys and girls? Yeah, the learners, it's a co-education school. We have boys and the girls. In terms of numbers? In terms of which, numbers. Which are more? The girls are more. We have more girls now in schools. Yes. So what uh, this project, what is the impact that this project has uh, done to this area? To this community? Yeah. Uh, we are providing education. And that's what is very important, I think, for now. This school is providing 
primary education to the community. Yes. So, like the so few... if you are to stay with me at least for the whole day, you would understand why this school is very important. Because on a daily basis, I tend to not less than, not less than 50 parents looking for school places. So meaning we are overwhelmed with it, school places. People come to for school places. Meanwhile, Kabulonga Primary School, led by Mr. Mulolo Alexander, showcases the power of partnership in enhancing student well-being. Yes, and um, we have the population of our learners of 1,221. As the doc had put it earlier on, our catchment area goes beyond Kabulonga up to um, Tendere East. Tendere East, Kalingalinga, those are the areas where we get most of our, our learners from. We have 54 members of staff who are taking care of those people. Cooperating partners have come apart from JICA building the school, which we really appreciate. We have other cooperating partners who have come on board, the Water Edge, which is actually helping us to to ensure that we have clean that and safe drinking water. Then we have the health room there. There is a, an organization called Health Learners. They have put up the health rooms in schools to ensure that children who are sick while in school are attended there and there. Our members of staff Eight of them have been trained to handle the first eight cases. Transitioning to the National Science Center, we witness the impact of JICA's support in fostering innovation and STEM education. This is the training uh, and curriculum support section. So we have got two buildings. We have, uh, this is a um, mathematics, design and technology, hospitality and tourism section. And this is the natural science, uh, natural sciences section. So all these two buildings were built, were built by JICA. So inside this building, we have specialized rooms. For example, in natural science, we have got uh, four laboratories. We have got physics laboratory, chemistry laboratory, agricultural uh, laboratory, and the uh, chemistry laboratory. And upstairs, we have got lecture rooms, and then we have the ICT and also the library. So all these were designed to support the learners in the approach of teaching. So this is the, the way our laboratories are structured. For example, this one is the physics laboratory. So you can see that, uh, as, as uh, I mentioned earlier, our focus mainly is promoting education. This is an example of the lecture room. And if I just take you back to our tables, these tables are made by Sun Center ourselves. These tools are made by Sun Center, the tables. So we want to make sure that also we we showcase as a, as a Sun Center on the competences that uh, we're supposed to share with our learners. So in this lecture room, only that you have to mind, we have been supported by JICA. We have the TVs, the, the, the smart TVs, we have got uh, projectors, we have got um, uh, lab, uh, desktops, laptops, printers, all supported by JICA. So these are the rooms that we use for our trainings. So when our teachers come, they will be maybe physics uh, lecture, uh, lecturers and teachers together, they will be in these rooms trying to either investigate the curriculum, either also coming up with different approaches of pedagogy in which they can implement the curriculum. So we go through from uh, curriculum development, curriculum implementation, assessment, also monitoring and evaluation. So we empower our teachers in all areas that support teaching and learning, but focusing on STEM education.
funded by JICA. So well, part of the funding is actually coming from here. So if the learners are exposed to the real life situation, so this is what we are able to do. So we are continuing with this up so that by the time the, the projects are finishing, this road is also done, together with the, the, the landscape as well as the drainage system that is there. Uh, exactly. Indeed. Indeed. So this Pictures. is Uh, picking up from where, where the madam left, National Science Center has three sections. There's a research and innovation, the training and curriculum where we just uh, passed there, and here, this is the production and maintenance section. So in all what she was explaining, the bigger part now comes from this end, where we do the production and maintenance of the teaching and learning materials. In order for us to support learning, STEM learning, or any type of learning in Zambia, we've been given this mandate to do the designing, the production, and the development of teaching and learning materials. So as you are able to see now around here, I think even at, uh, uh, behind you, we are given to do a target of about 10,000 desks using the old frame approach. All these are the, when you go in all our schools in Zambia, you'll find old, old, old frames. So we collected those frames and then government funded that project for us to do 10,000 desks. Of course, we know that if we do 10,000, we should be able to sit double that number, of which about a good number of students will not sit on the floor. So with what has been done, already we've done, we've worked on about 8,000 frames and we've distributed 2,000 already in the schools. Which schools were those? All the schools uh, uh, that are in Lusaka, uh, Lusaka province, as well as other provinces benefited. Southern province, we're talking about uh, Siavonga and Shirundu. Then we also have central province, Mumbwa, will also benefit, Chibombo, as well as Chisamba. So those are some of the schools that will benefit and the districts that will benefit from this project here. Other than that, there are other teaching and learning materials that we also produce. For example, when our team goes in the field to do the researches, whatever information that they're going to find, the issues there, Issues to do with pedagogies and any other things that may be found uh, in the field. Then the researchers bring it forward for to us. Then we are going to act. We do the researches as well. Then we design and then produce products that are supposed to be used. In uh, mathematics as well, we are producing graphic, graph boards, which were supported by JICA. We are also producing uh, the mobile laboratories. Now we've actually innovated. From the mobile apps, I think as we go this side, I'll be able to show you the new tables that we have produced as a National Science Center to support the teaching and learning of science. Then besides the sciences, we've also gone further to also help other subject areas that like design and technology. Those are workshops. So we are also designing the woodwork benches as well as the work benches for them to be used in the, in the teaching of STEM education in our in world. So at the end of the day, we are supporting STEM education as well as the quality of education in Zambia. These are the tables that we've innovated from the mobile lab that were initially supported by JICA. So we've now innovated into something more permanent. So when we install this table in a, in a particular school, uh, it comes with gas, electrical and water lines, as well as any other experiments that can be done. So when we install, the one table can take about 10 students. So that is the innovation that we've taken. These were the initial mobile labs that were supported by JICA. Then we saw that at the end of the day, 
they are, they are, they are being worn out at a rapid stage by the, by the learners. Mm -hmm. So we've gone the permanent way. When we go to Levi Mwanawasa University, you will find these are the tables that we are installed by National Science Center. So this is where we are, and also other innovations that are there in order for us to support STEM education. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time and for your attention. As our journey concludes, one thing is clear. JICA's commitment to education extends far beyond infrastructure. It is about nurturing minds, fostering partnership and building a brighter future for Zambia. From Lusaka District, this is more than a story. It is a testament to the power of education in transforming lives. This is Miriam Deborah Gamani reporting for ICD-TV.